Welcome to the Ego Actus reading series of Dramatic Voices. My name is Laura, and it is a thrill to be back here with Ego Actus, working on another podcast series. We've got new playwrights and directors with new plays coming towards us. And today I'm thrilled to start with the first playwright and director of our first play coming up, Railroad Christmas Story. If I could have our playwright and director say a quick hello with their introduction. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having us both. Yeah. Yes. It's wonderful to have you both here. I say we just dive right on in because I know folks are going to be not and curious to hear all about the play. So I'll start off with the first question and Toby, I'm going to direct it to you. First question, technically a two-in-one question, but what specifically brought you to the world of theater and what specifically brought you to writing, especially in theater? It always feels a little bit different compared to, say, ordinary writing or your typical writing, but I could be wrong. Well, I hadn't thought you were going to ask me that. I have to go back. Well, um, I've been in theater since I was a teenage stagehand, believe it or not or something called the Living Theater. And I think that's what turned me on to theater. Um, but um, most of my performing life, I was a dancer. And then found myself crossing over, as they say. So my first plays were actually with dancers as actors and dancers. And then it went on from there. Oh, that's marvelous. What a journey. You, you like writing? Yeah. Do I? Yeah. There we go. That's already a good answer. Well, I have the same question, but rather for the playwriting side, more for the directing side. What brought you into theater? And what brought you into directing specifically? Wow. Um, well, I um, I think I was uh, a ham as a small child. Uh, so I always liked making other people laugh and doing funny things. Um, so then I took the typical path of high school musicals uh, into college at NYU where um, I was still trying to sing and dance. And one of the teachers there introduced uh, me to some downtown performance groups like the Worcester Group and Mabu Mines uh, and, and a few others. And um, so I started more leaning towards alternative uh, work, downtown performance and uh, the more I got a taste of it, the more I wanted to uh, play a part in the whole creation of it. I consider myself a theater maker, uh, even though I'm just a director on this piece. I, I act, I write, I build sets, uh, I do whatever it takes. Uh, so, so yeah, that's got my hand in a lot of different things, but it's really nice uh, on this project just to be focusing on on Toby's text and, uh, um, you know, developing uh, work as a director. I love it. If there's one thing that, you know, artists will do is that they will put their hands into every aspect of art, be it dance, be it directing, acting, stagecraft. I think that's the most fun part of being within the theater world and surrounded by these theater people. But, well, you mentioned it, looking at Toby's text, so tell me, my question for you is, what was the process like writing this play from beginning to end? And if there was a main inspiration for it, what would you say it was? Well, I think it all began when I was living in Key West and I did a trilogy, I guess is what you'd call it, three plays about the Key West Railroad, which came all in the early 1900s. So I got very interested in railroad stories and happened to have a friend who was a railroad fanatic. So he helped me and um, finished off my my three one uh, in, in the early 1930s when the poor Key West Railroad got knocked over by a hurricane. It was it was great to have a hurricane in a, in a play, by the way. Yeah. And then, but I was reading around in the railroad in the 30s and I was amazed to find out how many people really were riding the railroad. There wasn't just hobo, it was whole families and young kids on their own and young girls on their own. It was just quite a new world for me. So I kept going. 
a long story short, and wrote this play, which is also about the, in the railroad, but it goes up to 1941. Yeah, which which was an important time, as you. Yeah! Wow, that's incredible. I mean, you never really think about it, but railroads are such an interesting part of our history. You think of especially not even the major cities, but even smaller ones. The way that they connect all of us and how they connect through history is kind of surreal, and you don't think about it when you're just sitting on a train. <laughs> No, but I think you consciously or subconsciously love the sound of a train. There's something about the sound. I like that. Oh, that's a good way of putting it. You know what? Next time I'm on the uh, MTA, I'm on that train, I'm going to take my headphones off, kind of sit back and close my eyes and say, let's listen to that train. Let's give it a minute. Oh. I love it. Well, a slightly similar question, but again, more on the directing side. What was it like directing Toby's text and essentially bringing it to life? And was there something that you learned directing this show? Or anything new that you noticed or realized where you said, oh, I can use this for next time? Well, I think, you know, this is a, 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 a great um, series because it, it really gives a chance for some seeds to, you know, start to... Um, germinating under the soil and start popping up above the soil and start, you know, climbing up and growing. Um, and so, you know, I, I like the idea that this, like this piece has not had readings at a bunch of other places. Uh, this is really, uh, you know, the first light for this piece. Um, I think it's also a challenge uh, for the performers in that way. Uh, but I think there's, you know, there's a lot to uh, like in this piece uh, in in um, you know what it's saying. I mean, the it it's called a railroad Christmas story, but it doesn't really matter whether it's Christmas or not. In some senses, uh, I like the idea of you know enclosing people that don't know each other uh, in a confined space and see what what happens. Like whether it's an elevator they're trapped in or a boat they're caught on, and in this case, it's a it's a railroad car. Uh, that all these people are in who have never been together before and how they uh, learn to uh, uh, learn about each other and how to deal with each other. Uh, and I also really like the idea that the play takes place in real time. You know, it's not like there's a scene and then it's three weeks later and then it's, you know, two months later. I mean, this all happens in the time in which they are in this car and it really forces a certain um, uh, uh, dramatic uh, 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 story to sort of unfold. And, and I hope the audience really appreciates that. What a great answer. I like that there's a sense of intimacy that you kind of want to create, not just within the play itself, right? All of these characters in one location, you get to see it all in real time. But within the, the space of itself, in this, um, in this theater making space, you get the audience seeing it and experiencing it with you. I love that kind of stuff. I Don't get me wrong. I do love Broadway, and I do love a good, spectacular Broadway musical. But there's something very special about being in this space that we're creating and in the space that you and Toby have created with this show. I have yeah, more. Yeah, yes, I will end. I agree about Broadway, but uh, yeah, I, I also like the flip side of that is, uh, you know, that that there can be in uh, venues like this a, a real sense of intimacy. Uh, and I think the play also has a real sense of immediacy. You know, it's it's coming at you right then, uh, even though it might be considered a period pa piece. Uh, it is still very uh, in the moment. I love it. And I feel like you're starting to answer my last question. And this question will be for both of you. And we can make it into a bit of a discussion with back and forth. And it might seem a bit of a loaded question, but I think it's an important question to ask nonetheless, which is, what do you hope the audience gets from sitting down and experiencing this play? Shall we, shall we just talk all at once? <laughs> all at the same time. Why not? <laughs> no, come on. start, to Toby. Stop. Oh, well, audiences are so important. I, I, 
audience just really make the moment and to have them live in the moment of, of a time that it's happening is is ultimate for me. Uh, and, um, and when an audience is taken on a journey, and boy, this is a journey, literally, um, um, that's my that, that's my highest aim. You know? uh, and I also want to say that because um, Ralph and I have never worked together before, and his questions and his comments have made me think much more deeply about the play and the time and go back and learn more about it. That I, uh, so I'm much more into it now than I was. And, and I also want to say that thanks to Ego Actors, uh, um, this is happening, and it's so important that it happen. And God bless them and the actors, too, who can bring something to life. And I'll add to that the Episcopal Actors Guild. I think they do uh, great stuff for the theater community, not just actors. Uh, and they have just a really lovely little space there uh, for pieces like this. So I imagine the evening is is going to be a very uh, pleasant and, you know, a chance not to just see the piece, but also think about, uh, you know, what it is speaking to. I mean, your question, uh, I hope the audience really uh, takes away, you know, another layer of this piece that, you know, just the idea of moving through time. There's a certain sort of uh, uh, symbolism and a certain sort of subtext in that. Um, and I think the piece also, it, it you know, that it sort of helps you see an idea of how other people can change us, that the potential for change, whether you're a young teen just starting on your journey in life or whether you're an older person who's experienced a lot, uh, when confronted uh, in a situation with other people, uh, the potential for change and and growth is is always present. Wonderful and very very insightful answers. I sincerely hope, and you know what? I think it's going to happen. The passion that you both have shown here through this uh, podcast episode, I'm sure, is going to affect your audience, and they will feel the same kind of passion that you both have had while making this show. Toby and Ralph, I have so much to thank for you both, not only for stepping forward to be part of this podcast series, but for being our first. And I am so excited. Folks, ladies and gentlemen, Railroad Christmas Story will be the first show Sunday, February 11th, and tickets are now on sale at egoactus.com. Again, that's egoactus.com. Railroad Christmas Story, Sunday, February 11th. Toby and Ralph, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.